Kia ora koutou. This is video two going through the practice question worksheet that many of you will have up on your Google Classroom. But if you haven't got it on your Google Classroom or you're just randomly watching this from somewhere else, I've put the questions that we're going to cover on this page. So pause the video and have a go at all of them. They cover three skills. Solving quadratics, using index laws and using logarithms. Okay, so let's start with question five. Um, question 5 has got two quadratics in there. So the first thing we should do when we see a quadratic at level 2 is just to have a look and see if it will factorise easily. Because if we can factorise, then that's going to be the fastest method. To solve any quadratic, what I'm trying to do is to say what are the values of the variable that will make this a true statement. And whenever we're solving, we use what's called the zero property, right, which is that 0 times anything is equal to 0. And that's why when we've got a quadratic in this form, we need to change it around a tiny bit first. So if I want to solve this, I'll start by rewriting it like this. Then what I'm going to try and do when I'm factorising is to get something times something equals 0. And if I can make either one of those things 0, then I've found a value of e that makes the equation true. So we can have a look at this and see if we can find an easy factorization, but you can see pretty quickly that you can't. You've got a minus 1 here, and you've probably got a 4e and an e here, or maybe 2e times 2e. But no matter which way you go, you won't be able to have a 1 and a 1 here, and a plus and a minus that is going to generate the plus 2e. So I know most of you watching are probably going to go, well, miss, why are you even bothering? I'm just going to grab my calculator and chuck it in there. And that's okay. But I want to show you how we know that we really don't want to factorize this one. Okay, and it's by having a bit of a look at it first. So now I'm going to say, well, what's the other main method I've got for solving quadratics? Well, I could do completing the square, but I'm not going to do that today. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula goes like this. My variable is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now I'm sure the first time you saw that you thought it looked absolutely horrible, but we pretty quickly get used to figuring out what the a, the b and the c are. So in this example we've got here, a is 4, b is 2, and c is equal to negative 1, right, because I've rewritten it into the form that I need, which is this. So substituting those in, what do we get? Well, we get e is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 4 times 4 times negative 1 divided by 8. Cleaning that up, I get negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 20 divided by 8. And I can chuck that into my calculator. E will equal 0 0.309, or E equals negative 0 0.809. What I want to show you now is what that means graphically. And when we move on to our graphing topic, you'll get really used to working with quadratic graphs, but you already did quite a lot of this at level 1. So this is the graph of the function y equals 4 x squared minus 2x minus 1. And you can see that the roots of the equation, or the solutions of that equation, are my 2x values. So this one here is negative 0.809, and this one here is 0 0.309. And that's what we mean when we solve an equation. Right? Okay, on to the next one. Where's it gone? Right, we need to solve this one here, which is pretty similar. Um, so let's move on to that. We've got 3b squared is equal to 2 times 2d plus 5. Expanding, I get 3d squared equals 4d plus 10. 3d squared minus 4d minus 10 equals 0. And again, we can look and see if we can factorise. So with this one, if I were able to factorise, I would look for two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 30, these two times together, and two numbers that added together to give me negative 4. But if you think about our nice factors of 30, like we did back in year 9, we've got 15 and 2. 
if I make one of them negative, it doesn't matter what I do, I'm going to get a gap of 13 or 17. Same thing doesn't really work with 6 and 5, and the same with 10 and 3. There's no combo in there that's going to work. So this is not one for factorization by grouping, it's another quadratic formula. So 3d squared minus 4d minus 10 equals 0, and off we go again, a is 3, b is negative 4, and c is negative 10, giving me d is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root of, what have we got, 4, negative 4 squared, 16, minus 4 times 3 times negative 10, divided by 6. I've got to say, I find this one of the most boring bits of algebra. I love algebra, but this is just something you've got to get good at. But really, you're probably going to do that on your calculator. But we need to be able to show, show that we can do it. Okay, so d is equal to 2.61 to 2dp, or negative 1.28. Let's look at the GeoGebra picture of that and see if it worked. Yep, you can see there's my 2.61 here, and here's negative 1.28 here. Right, okay, so that's all of the quadratic stuff I'm going to do in this video. Um, we've got now a set of four revision questions that look at our power laws. And with all of these, we've got fractional powers and we've got negative powers. So let's try those. Okay, the first one is 3x squared to the power of negative 2. I'm going to do this in two different ways. The first way is to recognize that when I've got a negative power, that means that I've got 1 over this whole thing to the positive power. Right? This is telling me to take the reciprocal. This is a revision video, not a full teaching video, but if you want to um, go over your negative powers, I'm pretty sure there's a video on that on the level 2 algebra playlist. Okay, but you will have done that in class and it's done very well on EP and in your Walker workbook. So keeping on going here, what do I get? Well, I've got 1 over 3 squared is 9 times x to the power of 4. Right? So it's 3 to the power of 2. And then I multiply these powers together here. The other way to do that is this. I've got 3 x squared to the negative 2, so I can just apply this power to each bit in turn. That gives me 3 to the negative 2 times x to the negative 4, which is 1 ninth times 1 over x to the power of 4, which I'm going to write like this. So either of those ways is good. Right, the next question is this one. 36p to the power of 8 to the power of a half. So the first way to do that is to recognize that I have to do 36 to the power of a half. And that's the same as the square root of 36. Then I'm going to multiply the powers together and get p to the power of 4. That gives me 6p to the power of 4. Question C is 16a to the negative 2b, all to the power of 1 quarter. So dealing with the 16 first means the fourth root of 16 times a to the negative 2 over 4 times b to the power of 1 quarter. The fourth root of 16 is the what times the what times the what times the what, so that's 2, b to the power of a quarter, a to the power of negative a half. Now I don't want to leave a negative power in my answer, I'm going to write that out like this. Okay, so that's my final answer there. The last question in the set of four is this one here, which was 5 over k cubed to the power of negative 2. And that's the same as k cubed over 5 squared. Right, when I'm dealing with a negative power, I'm working with the reciprocal. That gives me k to the power of 9 multiplying the powers, over 5 squared, which is 25. Now the last questions I'm going to look at in this video are the log ones. Logs are something that take a while to get your head around, but they're basically powers in reverse. 
So these are three very easy questions once you've got the hang of the basic log pattern. Let's have a look. The first one is this. Log to base 7 of x is equal to 2. Now I'm not teaching level 2 this year, but when I teach it, I always use this stupid thing that I call the loopy thing. So try not to laugh. It means this to the power of this equals this. And that's all there is to a log. So here, 7 squared is equal to x. 7 to the power of 2 is equal to x. x is 49. That's it. The next one, log to base 2, this is 7b, of 256 is equal to y. So we're going to do the loopy thing again. This to the power of this equals this. 2 to the power of y is 256. Now this is one where you've just got to skip count on your fingers, right? So 2 to the power of 5 is 32, 64, 128, 256. y is equal to 8. Right, so you can just jot that down, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and so on, until you hit this one here. Or you could take logs of both sides. So the other way to do it is y log 2 equals log 256, if you're doing a kind of calculator thing. And you get this. And it would give you 8. The last question is this one, log to base z of 343 is equal to 3. And again, we're going to do the loopy thing where we have this to the power of this is equal to this. z cubed is equal to 343. Now this one I can do just by knowing some of my powers, or I can now take the cube root of both sides. Right? So if z cubed is this, then z is equal to the cube root of 343, or as a fractional power, it's this, and you can get that on your calculator. And you can see that z is equal to 7. So there you go, that's the next um, couple of questions done. Uh, let's see what we've got left. Well, we've got about 12 questions left. I'm probably not going to get time to do another video today, um, but I'll try and do them over the next few days in case you need some algebra revision. Thanks for watching, and leave some comments if you've got any questions.